Hi everyone, my name is Giovanna Proença and today we're going to talk about problem set 4, guessing game of CS50 introduction to programming with Python. So if you would like to ask any question about programming or the career, schedule a free meeting with us, the link's in the description. And we would like to emphasize that this video solution is made for those who have already completed the assignment and want to have another view about the problem. Alright, we totally disencourage plagiarism. So in this guessing game, we're going to ask the user for a level, all right, we're going to prompt the user for a level and if the user does not input a positive integer, the program should prompt again. Then we're, gonna we're going to randomly generate an integer between 1 and n, inclusive, and then the user is going to guess what is the number that was chosen. All right, so for example, here we have prompt the user to guess that integer. If the guess is not a positive integer, the program should prompt the user again. If the guess is smaller than the integer, we should prompt we should output too small and ask the user again. If it's larger than the integer, we should print too large and ask the user again. And if the guess is the same as the integer, the, should, the program should output just right. All right, so let's see in here. Basically, the level will be numbers from one to level, all right? So in here, we're going to have the level, it's number from one to one. So the only guess that we can do is number one and it's saying just right. If we use the level 10, so we're going to uh, get a random number between 1 and 10 and we're going to start guessing and once we get this correctly we're gonna say just right and stop the code all right so I already did hear the pseudocode of what we're gonna work okay so basically we need to get the level set the random number and guess and check if it's correct or not from the user all right so let's start implementing here so we're gonna do a while loop all right we're gonna loop forever until the user give us the correct value for uh, for the input so we're going to loop forever until the user give us a positive integer all right so we're gonna do while true and we're going to break this this while loop once we get the correct number all right don't worry we're gonna see this in the future now we have to do some try we're going to use try and accept to check if the user is giving the correct input or not all right so to do this let's see how try and accept works so basically here i'm using w3 schools is a really good resource if you have any question about programming like understanding how a function work or what you, you can use in your code okay and basically the try block lets you test a block of code for errors and the accept block lets you handle the error okay let's see this example for example let's suppose we have this code try print x except we're gonna print an exception occurred the try block will generate an exception because x is not defined then we're going to print an exception occurred let's see another example in this code we will try to print the division of 10 by 0 but we know from math that we can't have any division by 0 then our code will go to accept and we will print an exception occurred so now that we understood how try and accept work, let's start applying here in our code, all right? So we're going to try, and what are we gonna try? We're gonna try to get the user input, okay? So I'm gonna get here, I'm gonna create a variable called level, and I'm going to already convert the input into an integer. So if this block doesn't work, we're going to do accept, all right? So it's really nice that we do this in here. So I'm gonna do int, input and I'm gonna ask for the level okay exactly like it's in here in the example we're guessing we're checking for the level okay now we need to check if the value of level is a positive integer all right so what are we gonna do we're going to do an if condition and we're gonna check if level is greater than one greater than zero right so if level is greater than zero or greater than and equals to one we're going to break our while loop all right so this means that we got the correct input for the level otherwise if the user uh type in something that is not an integer or a level that is a negative number what are we going to do we're going to the accept block and we're going to pass when we use the word pass we're going to ask the user again and we're going to keep trying this until the user understands that he has to pass for us an integer a positive integer all right that's it so let's see how it's working if we do here python game.py and i put here minus one 
he's going to ask me again. If I put here cat, he's going to ask me again. But if I put a positive integer, it will stop our code because we don't have anything else. But for now, it will stop our code. Okay, so now let's see how we're gonna set a random number for the user to guess. So in this case, we're going to use another library here. We have a library called random. So before we see how this random library works, let's understand how can we get functions from other modules and libraries. If you want to use a set of functions in your application from a library, you can use the import keyword. This way you can get access to code from another library and use it in your own file. For example, if we want to print the correct value of pi, we can import the math library into our code. Then we can use the pi method of the math library to print it. So we're going to do import math in the first line, and in the second line, we're going to do print math.pi. And then the output will be the number of pi, 3.15, so on and so forth. So like we can see here, we can use again W3Schools, all right? And we're going to use this random library here. So we're going to import the random library. And what are going to happen? If we use this rand 